So I think we can start now. So hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today. The topic is how to boost innovations in the Dutch-German border region with manufacturing next materials. Um, you are all muted just to avoid echoes and disturbances during the presentations. Um, questions can be asked after the presentations and we will have a short, uh, short, a longer Q&A session at the end of this webinar. You can do this by, um, there's a button, raise your hand, or um, you can type your questions into the chat if you would like, if you would prefer this, because we are screen record, we are creating a screen recording and we will publish it afterwards to you and also um, to other people who might be interested in these activities. But let's keep it short. Uh, our first presentation will be done by our partner, OSTNL, and uh, we will have a short introduction into Manufacturing Next Materials, and after that, uh, some best practice examples, and then the Q&A session. So, the stage is yours, Judith. Thank you very much for this introduction, Henrik, and I hope you can uh, you can properly hear me. Uh, indeed, today we will talk about the Interref uh, Germany uh, Dutch the, the Netherlands Germany collaboration on manufacturing next materials. Um, the it's it's good to understand the participating regions. It's the the northern and eastern regions of the Netherlands and uh, western regions of uh, Germany. We will have a bit more detail on that later on in the presentation. Um, nine partners in total uh, make this program happen. Ostenel is lead partner, but nine partners in total with the Brabant's uh, development agency, the Brabant Development Agency, uh, NMVP uh, in Deutschland. Saxion is there, University of Twente, University of Münster, University of Duisburg, Essen, Fraunhofer, Forschungsfertigung, Patrizelle Münster, FFB is, is also one of the partners, and of course, Cato Composites as um, SME partner. Uh, as Henrik already said, we will have a Q&A session afterwards. You can put your questions in the chat as well. Uh, always, there is, of course, the possibility to reach out to us after the presentation so that we can have also a separate conversation and, and exchange more in detail in our contact details are on the website and also at the end of this presentation. So going to the program, the main goal is to uh, improve the cross-border collaboration and a uh, second goal to develop the manufacturing capabilities in the region that is included in the program, especially when, it's, uh, when it is about applying smart and sustainable materials in um, in components and in products, and more details will follow, of course, in the presentation. So cross-border collaboration and manufacturing technologies, scaling up manufacturing. So a bit more information in the next slide. Um, the program is designed to develop manufacturing capabilities in the region and improve this cross-border uh, collaboration. There's a closed part and an open part. And for the participating SMEs in this call, the, the open part will probably be the most interesting part, but we will also talk a bit about the closed part. So cross-border collaboration, uh, manufacturing capabilities, we try to achieve that in three main ways. One is, of course, transferring, exchanging knowledge on legal aspects, on collaboration, cross-border collaboration, on regulations, on uh, manufacturing, piloting. So there will be a number of topics coming uh, in the coming few years where you can participate in trainings and workshops. There's also a second part, that's the closed part. I will talk a bit in the next slide more in detail about that, um, where we design and really set up pilot productions, developing the manufacturing scale of capability in the region um, that is also available for the SMEs. But most importantly, the open part of the project allows SMEs to propose projects that are focused on pilot productions. So three main ways, transferring, exchanging knowledge. Uh, there's three pilot projects. I will talk about that in the next slide and the open part where SMEs can propose projects. So on the next slide, a bit more about these, uh, um, about the closed part of the program, the Lighthouse projects. 
there's three. Um, and in these three projects, the partners that we have in this program, the nine partners that I mentioned before, work together in different settings in different ways to develop in this cross-border region and manufacturing capabilities in three main areas, three lighthouse projects. The first one on the left is about um, production capability, manufacturing capability for thermoplastic composites. This uh, project is led by Kato Composites, but some of the other partners are also working in this to develop this and to have this available. The second project, Advanced Solutions for Battery Materials, is led by the University of Twente, more specifically the Fraunhofer Innovation Project there, where they work on a pilot line for battery production, battery manufacturing capability. And the third one is led by University of Duisburg Essen, where they look into additive manufacturing and all the manufacturing capabilities around this technology and all the aspects that come with additive manufacturing. What type of materials are most interesting, but for instance, also, if you apply additive manufacturing in your products, in your production, what does that mean for your um, sustainability, uh, the sustainability of your product? So then on the next slide, a bit more about the open part of the project. And like I said, probably that is the most interesting part for the SMEs that are around the table here. You can also uh, connect with the uh, partners working in the closed project, in the in the lighthouse projects. But for that, there will be no financial support for this open part. You can propose projects uh, where you can get subsidy. And the target group for the Manufacturing Next Material project are SMEs in the manufacturing industry that make products or components for products from innovative materials. And on screen, you see what categories of materials are included. And it's quite a broad definition. So there should be a lot of potential projects out there, uh, quite a broad scope of materials included. Um, the main idea is that for a project, if you want to propose a project, that it has to do with scaling up the manufacturing of a product or of a component of a novel material. So it's not so much about developing new materials or producing materials, but it's really about producing components, products from these interesting novel materials. Um, it, it should be a project with a collaboration between a German and a Dutch SME. So that is definitely a requirement. It's also good to understand that the project proposals that come in, we do not decide whether you whether your product is approved or not. The final decision for a project to be approved and to get subsidy is with the Interreg Steering Committee. So we can help you in shaping, we can help you in finding um, partners across the border to work with in this project, but we will not take the decision whether you will get subsidy or not. So cross-border collaboration, scaling up of um, Production, preferably from TRL 6 to TRL 8. And the next slide says a bit more about where you should be, can be in this scaling up process. There's a number of steps pictured here in the slide that describe how you can come from the initial idea, the proof of concept, all the way to uh, the full uh, scale production. Uh, you do not have to propose this full, uh, all these steps into a project proposal. You can step in in different phases of this project with your proposal all the way at the beginning and take a few steps. So there's different ways and different parts of this process that fit in the scope of the project. Um, the first call is open if you have visited our website, you know that the first call, so the call for first uh, product proposals is open. Uh, today we are the 29th, so we have this webinar to explain more and most of all answer your questions. Um, June 12th is the deadline for the first call. There will be a next call also in this year, so if you cannot meet that deadline, there's nothing lost because the next call will be until October 18. So there should be ample opportunity in this year to propose the Manufacturing Next Material project as a whole um, uh, lasts four years, the deadline, or we should be finished by the 15th of November. But of course, there's some wrap up to do. So all the work should be done by the end of August. Um, 
Yep, I think that is the main part. Of course, for you, very important is what is on the next slide, but what is also visible on the website, on the right-hand side, you see the map of the region that is included. So it's very important to be aware that SMEs in these regions are included, except for Limburg. So this is the standard uh, Deutschland, Nederland, Germany, Netherlands uh, region that is included in Interreg except this time Limburg is not included. So if you're an SME in this part and you have a, an SME partner at the other side of the, of the border, you can propose a project. Um, project uh, not all project costs are eligible, only personnel costs is el eligible. There's a maximum funding rate of 50%. There's a minimum subsidy of 15,000 and a maximum of 17,000. So these are not huge projects, uh, obviously. Um, all the details are on, also on the website, like I said before. These are the main conditions, I would say. So how to benefit? Uh, some of the benefits I already mentioned in the presentations, but there's four main routes for you to benefit. Of course, talk to us. We we can uh, we can talk to you about the ideas that you have, and if this program does not fit or does not suit you, we can also discuss what other initiatives are out there for you to uh, get support with. It does not only. It does not necessarily need to be manufacturing next materials. There's other projects out there that might suit you better. I've had a conversation a while ago with a company from Limburg who wanted to participate, could not because it's outside of the region, but we discussed another program where they can apply for a project. So that is definitely one way. It will also help us to shape the rest of the program. Of course, there's the matchmaking work where we, on an individual basis or through matchmaking events, can uh, connect you to uh, partners at the other side of the border. If you do not have that network yourself, we can help you to build that. Workshops and trainings are there, which also provide you with knowledge, of course, but also expand your, your network. And at last, but not certainly not least, um, there's the scale-up project themselves. Like I said, it should be a cross-border collaboration, preferably a TRL six to eight uh, and 50% um, subsidy with a maximum amount of 70,000 subsidy. So I think these are the main points and I saw some questions coming in already. Like I said, more information on the website. You can contact us also outside of this session, but the Q&A session will also be open later on. Yes, contact us at the email address or through the website. Henrik, back to you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, so now we will come to the second talk. And it's Andreas Barr who will give some examples about best practices. So, Andreas, you should be able to share a screen. And you need to unmute yourself. So first I unmuted me and now Perfect. I share the screen. I hope that will work. So you see my screen? Yes, it's yes. black, but yes. Okay, that's fine. Of course, it's a recording. Now we have the first slide. So I'm uh, very proud and uh, thankful to present best practice uh, uh, examples here because um, I'm um, in collaboration with OSTNL and uh, NMVP for more than uh, 10 years. And we have had uh, two big uh, Interreg uh, project uh, like uh, m, &M. And uh, this one is uh, rocket, uh, rocket and Rocket Reloaded. Rocket Reloaded is the second part of a rocket. It's a, um, also Interreg. So, as you see it, uh, it's uh, the same Interreg uh, um, A funding scheme and funding uh, region. We have the same region here, like uh, Udis um, told to us. 
And uh, it's very important that we have uh, partners on both sides of the border to collaborate. So these are the partners. And here you see our logo in us GmbH. For MNM, we are an associated partner and uh, are looking for um, SMEs in uh, Niedersachsen. And uh, as Hilde said, uh, if you have some uh, project uh, which can't be funded uh, in uh, MNM, um, uh, maybe we can find also some uh, possible programs uh, in Germany for you. So what does uh, uh, Rocket means? Rocket was a big project with a 10 million euro budget, and um, we had uh, 6 million uh, um, public funding and uh, 4 million private funding of 4 million from uh, the companies who have uh, their own contribution. And um, we have uh, uh, 31 innovative uh, Dutch-German corporations supported, uh, some feasibility studied, uh, and so on. It was very, very successful because you see here five awards we've got uh, for Rocket. And um, this uh, Best Dutch German Cooperation project, um, SuperSurf, is, uh, was uh, supported by me. So I'm very um, uh, experienced in, in these uh, projects. So if I can assist you in some fields, uh, you may uh, ask uh, me also. Uh, as uh, Hilde and uh, Judith. So what are the goals uh, of the rocket that we had uh, innovations through cross-border collaboration in nanotechnology, photonics, micro and uh, nanoelectronics, advanced materials. So you see um, in, uh, um, in the Netherlands, I guess it's, um, um, oh, Judith help me, it's um, how you call it in, in the Netherlands, high-tech no, no, oh, high really? systems and materials. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. This is it. Yeah. And um, so you see, uh, we are, have here also advanced materials. Uh, this was a program uh, which um, stopped at TRL-6. This means the prototype. And now we are go further, uh, TRL-7 and 8. And uh, it's very... Um, Yes, um, um, yes, uh, nice to see how we can bring prototypes into the market uh, with the help of MNM. So, um, one main information is um, without these projects, um, these partners who co collaborated or worked together wouldn't have worked uh, together if we haven't had these uh, projects. So, uh, it's a um, big chance for you to uh, um, use this uh, advantage and uh, collaborate uh, with the, the support uh, of OSNL, of NMVP, and of us. So this is uh, for uh, Rocket and Rocket Reloaded. But uh, as an associated partner, we have uh, some uh, additional goods because um, if you are, have products or materials, um, you want to bring onto the market uh, um, from uh, 24, this means this year, uh, to 2027, I guess it's the end of the uh, uh, project, um, you will have uh, to look about uh, information to produce a digital product passport. So uh, we are, have uh, upcoming regulations in the EU it's uh, called Eco Design for Sustainable Product Regulation. And um, you have uh, not to worry about this. It's a very yeah, normal process in the EU. Maybe you've heard uh, about the battery pass. This battery pass uh, will come uh, definitely in February 27. And uh, uh, we have also one project with uh, battery materials. So you will um, have uh, uh, to um, provide information on materials and composition, carbon footprint, and so on. And um, this will become also to other uh, materials uh, by 27 or latest on uh, 2030. So what's the relevance for you? We have uh, these uh, three um, lighthouse project uh, 
Hilde described, or Judith uh, was this. So there we have uh, some materials and products we want to develop. And uh, we looked uh, what kind of uh, products uh, could be uh, affected. And you see it's the uh, most of the uh, products, the uh, textiles, fiber materials, ceramics, it's uh, non-ferrous metals, aluminum light uh, components, plastic polymers, um, and uh, post-cuma recycling uh, content, which has to be um, as described uh, for your products or materials. But uh, don't worry, um, we have an, uh, uh, a, a lot of uh, workshops. And uh, if you want to, I can uh, um, present more about this topic uh, in these workshops. And uh, maybe I can assist a little bit if you have uh, to uh, build up uh, products, passports, and so on. This is a little add-on from uh, NMN, uh, from Inos for NMN in this uh, cooperation as a um, associated partner. So I'm looking at the time, Henrik. One second, but I think you are still in time. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yes, you are definitely. <laughs> I added some uh, slides, so I'm very astonished to be in time. So I guess uh, we can go uh, to the Q and A session. Ah, okay. So thank you very much for your talk. Um, and we have the first question, which uh, Judith already uh, saw. Um, we have this information on the website, that's true, but what is the TRL level and which uh, which qualifies um, companies to apply? That was the question. Yeah, and I've mentioned it a few times and it's also described in the information on the website. It's roughly TRL 6 up until TRL level 8. So if you have a... Th there's an example out there where there's a company who produces composite materials with new components in a new way and now they want to see can we produce a product from that so if you have this first shape and you move forward with that idea in this project that would be roughly a good mm -hmm. entry point okay and do you have further questions maybe it's good to add to that that if you are already on tl7 um, that you can still join because it's starting point TRL 6, but if you are already on 7, you can still join and move further up to TRL 8 and uh, maybe 9. Okay. Yeah, that's a good addition. If you remember in the presentation, there was this slide with all these process steps, all these arrows. Anywhere in this process, you can enter with your proposal. Mm -hmm. But the minimum level is this TRL 6, about TRL 6 level, and you can enter at any point to bring it up to tier eight. And it's also not necessarily required that you are, if you are at the very beginning of that process, that you in one project go all the way to tier eight. So you can take smaller steps and make a project proposal out of that. Okay. And then next question is also very good. How is the intellectual property handled within these projects? <laughs> Hi Tom. Yes, hello. Uh, yeah, the IP in the in the project is is handled within the project, so within the sub project itself. As as partners in uh, in this program in M and M, we will not uh, be be involved in in uh, sharing or or having a discussion about it. It has to be done within uh, this combination of the two partners uh, together. We can help you write it down, but we will not participate in it. You don't have to share things with other partners outside your uh, small oh, consortium. Mm -hmm. um, and I have an, another question. Um, so it's okay if we uh, if two companies from both sides of the border collaborate. It's not necessarily uh, that these uh, two companies um, collaborate with the Lighthouse projects. No, that's right. There's so no can... need to work with any of the partners or with any of the knowledge institute. There's the possibility, but there's no obligation to work with any of the partners. No, you must see the Lighthouse pro project as examples where you can see what is possible with this within yeah. this topic. So but... it can inspire you to to see if your uh, if there are new ideas for your company. 
Okay, but that's the other point. So uh, that you can use the Lighthouse projects if, if it's useful for you. So that's a good information. You can, but you do not have to use these. Correct. Perfect. So, and um, to the participants, do we have further questions? That you want to share with the entire group. <laughs> you can unmute yourself. I think not this time. Uh, is yeah, there, say... so, uh, uh, Hendrik, yeah. uh, on the question on the TRL, uh, it's for us, it's, it's normal information to talk about uh, TRL levels and things like that. Uh, I think the basis, uh, basic is if you done something like a feasibility study, you did something and really tried something, you, you made this first step. If you have some kind of result and it's positive, this is normally the, the moment that you could start with the project. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some research and some feasibility uh, study, uh, maybe funded by a national uh, program or whatever. That that would be the the first stage that fits within M and M. Okay, and um, <clears throat> if I'm interested uh, interested in this project, when will we have a matchmaking? So um, you already mentioned that uh, you will help companies to find the right partners. Will will we have a? I guess we will have a matchmaking. So when will it be, and where will it be? Is it already planned? It is targeted for the 30th of May. Hilda, please also uh, step in because you yes. are not handling this. Yes, we have targeted to uh, organize the matchmaking ses session on the 30th of uh, May, so end of May. Um, and we would also like the input from the participants in this webinar. Uh, if one, they would like uh, to join such a matchmaking session and two, uh, in what form they would like it, because we can organize it in a live session, but we can also organize it online if that's preferred. Um, but that also depends on how many companies are interested in such a matchmaking session on such mm -hmm. short notice, because of course it is already in four weeks. Um, yeah. We have the vacation uh, this uh, this week in the, in the Netherlands. Yeah. So it is possible that it's it's a bit hard for the companies to to come to a matchmaking session on such short notice. So we'd like your input, yeah, the input from the participants as well. On yeah, that. but could be interesting if you just joined a matchmaking session because there was also the, the, the question that the first call is relatively soon. Um, so uh, if there are other calls, so maybe you can join the first matchmakings and then you can join the second call because yeah, it's true. It's a, it's a tough start in this project, um, but um, yeah, there are more calls. Um, which will come later on. So it's not just this one call. Okay. Maybe um, it's also good to add that going to the, uh, attending a matchmaking session is not mandatory. Uh, mm -hmm. If you already have a project idea or if you already have a partner from the neighboring market, um, you can just fill in the uh, yeah, project uh, proposal um, and we can hand it in and then it can be uh, handed into the steering committee within this first call. Um, of course, you can join the matchmaking session or if you need more time, you can always attend or always propose in the second call. Um, and then you can still start uh, in, at, in, the, in January 2025. Great, great. So this is about the projects and um, we also got workshops and trainings. Do we have some further information about this possibly? For yeah, whom is the... this interesting? <laughs> The workshops and trainings will start after summer. And of course, if you have uh, a specific need where you would like to have a training, uh, we would very much like to hear about that. But the first trainings and workshops will be after summer uh, on selected topics. And, and as mentioned in the presentation, sometimes it's about the benefits and pitfalls of cross-border collaboration and rules and regulations, but also about uh, what, to take, uh, what to think about when you want to scale up your pilot production or um, bio-based composites or sustainability aspects of mm -hmm. additive manufacturing. There will be a, a broad variety of topics that we will organize trainings and workshops on. But again, if you have specific needs in that area we would very much like to hear about that 
that is also, of course, an opportunity to expand your network, to meet uh, other SMEs in the same field as you, to get more connections across the border, because also these workshops and trainings, we target that they are in a cross-border setting, so not just a Dutch or not just a German training, but it should also uh, contribute to the uh, strengthening of the cross-border relationships and the collaborations that we can build. So, yeah, sounds great. So in the end, we could say that this um, project is rather something like a framework and we can fill it with life by the input from all of you. Exactly. So as soon uh, as you give us uh, your input, your needs and so on, we will take care of this and see what we can realize in this uh, in this um, project in the end. So therefore, this first workshop um, digitally, just to give you an overview. And now we are looking forward to your feedback. Yes. I uh, still have a question in the in the chat. Uh, I don't I think everyone can see it. Uh, stupid questions don't exist. Uh, so also not this one. Um, are universities eligible or just startups or just SMEs? Um, and I can also answer that one. Universities can be part of the consortium, uh, but not as part of the, yeah, as, a, as a third edition. So it must have, every consortium must have one Dutch SME and one uh, German SME. And then the universities or knowledge institutes can be added as a third party, uh, but the SMEs still have to attend. Startups can also um, be part of the consortium. As long as they are part of the funding area, or is as it also possible to area. join from outside the area? It's not completely excluded. I can feel Tom already wants to jump in, <laughs> but it's not excluded, but there should be a very important reason for a, a partner from outside of the region to be included. It should be exclusive knowledge or capabilities that are absolutely vital to realize the project. Then you can mm -hmm. convince the steering committee, the interest steering committee, that it's absolutely necessary. But it is you have to have your really good reasons. Okay. Yes, and there was the question. Now there's the question about the hours. Only personnel costs are uh, eligible. Uh, yes, that is is the case. That is different in in this uh, inter period uh, compared to the the former inter uh, period where we could put it uh, as uh, Andreas also said. Uh, uh, the the rocket project there it was allowed to have also other costs. In this project, it's not, and there is a, a forty percent uh, uh, overhead uh, added to the the hourly rates that are uh, fixed by uh, by Interref, um, and that makes it uh, also uh, very important that that the partners are really working on the project together. So that should be uh, a good uh, spending of hours from the from both uh, SMEs in the project, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the question about someone outside the region, it um, the, the most important thing, since it is an economical uh, program, uh, is that the partners that benefit from the project uh, should be from within the region. Yeah. If there could be someone like a knowledge institute from just outside the region, there wouldn't be uh, such a big problem with it, but it's not logical that they that they join because it's only personal cost and it's only uh, a 50% uh, funding rate. Yep, and we were asked to show the map again. So this is the map. I hope you all can see this. Yes. And um, yeah, it's not completely North Rhine's failure. It's, um, it's, uh, it goes down to Düsseldorf, Dirk, I think. So unfortunately, Aachen is not part of this funding area. But what was was in, the... The, in, in another uh, Interreg. Uh, yeah. Uh, Origo Maasrein. Yeah. Yeah. There's an additional question in the chat. Uh, I don't think it's visible for everybody. Who do we need to contact if we have a German SME and a German university combination? If, if that is the question, that it's a German university. Well, you can contact us at Ostenel. We can help you to find a, a Dutch. Uh, partner to work with, depending a bit, uh, of course, on what the 
partner would need to be and deliver for you, but we can uh, we can certainly discuss that. That's part of our role to to connect you to partners that could be interesting in this. Yeah, but of course, you could also uh, 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 be in contact with NWP. Uh, yeah, it's it's all possible. You can do it by email or uh, at the at just the website, but also by phone or uh, what you want. Basically, we should be uh, reachable for uh, for every question. Yes, and the partners will try to help you find the the partners uh, uh, you need. Mm -hmm. The picture of the presentation is quite small. Oh, I've yeah. added that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay, you. Uh, it was you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I no, the, the presentation can be downloaded from our website as well and the picture of the project region is included in that but again i think limburg is not included limburg is it's not included but it's included in this map i'm not sure yeah that is correct that's why in small letters under the picture it says please note limburg is included. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. How to split the subsidy between the parties? Well, that is part of your conversation together, I would say. Oh, you're making yeah. a picture. Big. Thank that, you, that Bert van Gestel. Beautiful. Great. <laughs> but, uh, the, the, the basic is that you uh, do a declaration. Each partner uh -huh. does his own declaration. Of hours. Yeah. Of hours. And according to this hours, uh, they you will get the, the funding. So the 50% of the cost that you claimed. If you want to uh, split it later or do something with it that's outside our influence, but basically everybody gets uh, gets uh, money from the declarations that they do and which are, uh, of course, accepted. Yeah. And maybe to answer the question more specific, uh, one partner cannot have more than 70% of the hours and therefore 70% of the money. I think that answers the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have further questions? I think uh, not this time. Yeah. <laughs> but you know the website, and I will send uh, you an email with the um, screen recording and also the, some more contact details. So if you have any questions you can contact us and we can yeah. help you yes uh, especially if you have a project idea you want to share with us uh, where you're searching partners please share this also with us so um, we are also mm -hmm. very curious uh, to see what you want to develop yes yeah. and also if you have several ideas you don't have to choose just one uh, every partner or every sme can uh, participate in a project uh, four times uh, twice as a lead partner and twice as a participant. So maybe that also gives some possibilities on how to get more projects and more funding. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Cut your project to smaller pieces. Oh, there's another, you uh, know, uh, yes, uh, that maximum of 70,000 euros is subsidy or budget? It's subsidy. It's the subsidy. Yeah, so it's 140. 50 percent of your. And there's a question: How can I identify opportunities in the Aachen Limburg call? What Aachen Limburg call? There's other projects that do cover that region. If that is your question, this particular program does not cover Aachen Limburg, as we mentioned before. Yes. And um, MWP is working on a project, but it's not um, it's not finished yet, so it's not um, granted. So therefore, there are other po possibilities. If you have uh, concrete questions, uh, you can send us um, the questions. Maybe we can help you. And Holger, yeah, um, you can yes, unmute yeah. yourself. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm not connected with video. Sorry for that. So uh, actually, the aforementioned questions that were mine. So I, I, so it was not my intention to do that like anonymously, but um, I also did not want to bother everybody. After I kind of figured that I 
basically dialed in into, into the wrong call here, because I am from Aachen and uh, I have strong connections to Limburg and I've worked with Indirect in the past. So when I saw that, that is about uh, new materials and stuff, and that is about the area I'm busy in. So I thought it may be interesting to um, think in here and uh, to clarify that last question. Um, as apparently this call now is excluding ARC and as well as Limburg, where can I find information on stuff that would apply to me and my colleague at the other side of the border? Yeah, in general, you know? it's yeah, in general, it's the funding area of uh, Interreg um, Origo Mars Rhein, as far as uh -huh. I know as well. Uh -huh. And there you can find additional information. And as soon as we got some activities in these fields, we can send you an email about we don't have it yet, but okay, there yeah. are different um, different um, activities. Um, I'm not sure if there's something similar right, uh, already running, like uh, manufacturing as materials. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm I'm not sure, but um, okay. maybe in the future. Okay. Well, um, I'm happy to be kind of posted there. So thanks a lot for that information. It's good to hear that something is going on, and. Um, yeah, sorry that I can't be part of this, but uh, yeah, that's uh, how life is. Thanks a lot. It was a mm -hmm. great meeting, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for attending. Thank you, Holger. Thank you. <laughs> There's so, one additional question coming in about the hourly rate and the calculation. There's fixed rates for different levels of roles in your project organization, and those hourly rates are, are given by the Interreg organization. So it's a fixed rate. And I think those details are also in the subsidy conditions that you can find also on the website. And if you can't find it there, please contact us. We can send it to you also separately. But it is in the download section of the website. I hope that answers that question. Yes, it was a sum up. Okay, so do you have further questions right now? Again, you can send us emails later on, but if you have a question right now, please feel free to ask. I think the most urgent questions uh, have been put in the chat. Yeah. And, we, and people know our faces now, so I'm sure they... <laughs> They will feel comfortable in contacting us in the future. Yeah. So thank you very much uh, for your attendance and um, for um, listening to this uh, to this project proposal. And um, yes, if you have further questions, you can send us an email, and I will send you an email with a screen recording so you can have a look later on. And um, it's wonderful because I would say our presentation was pretty comprehensive and you still got questions. So <laughs> thank you for your questions and the discussion. And we are looking forward to meeting you in the future for Manufacturing X Materials, maybe in the matchmaking session we have um, in one month. We will see. So again, thank you very much and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.